channel. So today's feature, walk around review only. I have here the 2022 BMW 220i M Sport. So this is the all new 2 series here on our market. We are not sure if we're getting the new M2 Comp yet. They're still awaiting for its launch there in Germany. But the one I'm referring to, actually, I just remembered, is the M240i. We have no word if we're getting that here. But knowing BMW, you can indent order here. What we get here for now is this base variant, but still the M Sport trim. So with its looks, I gotta be honest, I'm not a big fan of it. However, seeing it first time here, I mean, it's kind of growing on me. I do like its aggressive and angry looks. And yes, there are a few character lines here, creases here on the hood and as well on the side. I do love the side profile of this new 2 series, by the way. And again, at the front, I do like the older ones still, just being honest. Also, you have active grills here. They're shut at the moment since this is just here in the stock room. And then you have BMW LED laser lights. Also, I am able to demo this for the first time. They look sick and even they adjust. There's a dynamic light function here, like the BMW 520i Luxury. Also, the link of that will be in the description down below. And here at the front, there's a lot of gloss black here, but it's fine. It's on the outside. Issue though, these vents don't serve anything. Anyway, and then ground clearance. This is around 120 millimeters, so it is quite low, but it's just right for a sports coupe. And then wheels, uh, I do love this by the way, these five spoke wheels. And then you have M Sport badges as well here. And being the M Sport variant, you have M Sport interior, badges, wheels, suspension, and brakes. So I really wish I can drive it, but hopefully that will be at another time. And then side mirrors, they are really, really long. But it does give it the sporty coupe look. And at the side profile, there is a gray side skirt here. And then you have bigger wheels at the rear. Now here at the rear of the BMW 220i M Spark, I gotta say, I do prefer this rear over the older one. I mean, there's just something I like with this LED lights here, the crab glow. Yes, again, there's somewhat gloss black here. But at least the bumper is gray theme, not gloss black for some reason. And like all BMWs, you have real exhaust all around. Kudos on that. And then there's a 220i designation here as well on the side. But surprisingly, I was expecting, hence this being the M Spark variant, I was expecting an M badge somewhere here. Anyway, maybe that just goes for the M240i and M2 competition. And unlike some BMWs, I was expecting this to go up by itself. But no, it's only a manual tailgate. But this is a surprise. Despite being a coupe, you have still 530 liters of space. That is exactly the same as the BMW 520i Luxury. So space here in the back is crazy. But there's not much storage here. There's no net storage, no cubby spaces whatsoever. Like every other BMW, you can fold the seats down here. There are two latches here on either side and just fold the seats down. It's actually a 30T, 30T, 30T layout. That's actually a surprise. I was expecting a 60, 40 layout. This is quite hard as well to put down. Take note. So this is the interior of the BMW 220i M Sport. Yeah, here in the interior it does feel a little bit more special. And opening the doors, I did notice it is quite wide. But the door cards, the materials here, there's also nice textures on the door. Barely hints of plastic. The, the quality here is amazing. And there's also nice green textures as well just below your memory seat and the door handles. And then there's a cubby space and a bottle holder on either side. My water jug still fits, amazing. And then I'll shut the door. Okay, with the amount of coupes or coupes that I've tested out so far on my channel, this is probably one of the thickest I've heard. Damn! Okay, wait. I'm a bit spoiled with the 520i Luxury. Let me check something out. Okay, it's not soft closed. Anyway. Okay, I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so thick. Headlining material here is black. Also, the quality of fit and finish is amazing as well. It's all leather. Yeah, there's a ton of gloss black, but that's given already. Even the visor is black. There's vanity mirror with light as well. I wonder if this guy's like, nah. But this visor feels special. I mean, it's black, but it's nice to the touch still there's also here for the passenger side and then yeah like every other bmw as i said in my five series review the new one the interior is black i know every two series are only black interior you cannot option it 
anything out. Correct me if I'm wrong though. So back here in the interior left side, all your light buttons are there. Here in the middle, the center console, the air conditioning vents are wrapped in this silver trim and then steering wheel. This is probably the nicest BMW steering wheel I've touched so far. There's also an M logo as well down here. Uh, and then same controls here and there with your cruise control and then your infotainment functions. But unlike the some of the BMWs I've tested out, except for the X3, this has paddle shifters. That's a nice addition. And of course, this is meant to be a sports coupe. Yes, it's gonna be one heck of a ride to all the lucky buyers who've bought this so far. Paddle shifters are aluminum, but there's a rubber pad in the back, so it gives a nice touch as well. And then you have your digital display. Somewhat the same layout in the BMW 1 series. And then you have a 10.2 inch infotainment system here in the middle. It looks a little bit small, just being honest. At least all their functions are still there. You still have your swivel wheel here in the middle. It looks exactly the same as the 1 series. The navigation is really small, uh, but it's still crisp enough. You can widen it. You can check everything like your service requirements, your oil temperature, engine temperature, gearbox, service history, so on and so forth. Exactly the same. And then below the air conditioning vents, you still have physical buttons surprisingly. Just two blank buttons here on either side, but that's it. So it's kind of even placed well, these blank buttons. And then you have your radio controls here. They're also physical. And then below that, you have a cubby space. It's also glass back, but Surprising it's not dirty yet. That's how new this unit is. You have a wireless charging pad. My phone fits. There's also ambient light somewhere underneath here. There's a green light somewhere here. That's actually cool. You have two cup holders, one 12 volt socket, one USB port, my water jug. Okay, fits but doesn't go all the way in. There's plastic grips around it. So at least it still fits. And then you have soft pads here with blue stitching. Also, yeah, all the seats here have blue stitching all around. But unlike the 520i Luxury that I reviewed earlier, the soft pads here for your knee is way softer. It's not as stiff as the 5 series. And then center console box. Okay, that's pretty decent. Okay, this is even more space than the 520i Luxury line. And there's a one USB-C port and then a light here. And the center console box is also leather. Controls here in the middle. The gear lever is quite small. It's also gloss black. Why? That's the, the thing you're gonna touch the most because you're moving forwards and backwards and then yeah, they decided to make that gloss black. And you still have the same driving modes here. Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro. Your start-stop button is also wrapped in this silver trim. Also the M Sport seats as well. This is what you get with this M Sport variant. There's also Alcantara here in the middle. And then you have tie support adjustment as well. But surprisingly, despite being a sport style bucket seats, there's good bolstering and it's still comfortable to sit here. So that's about here in front of the all new two seats. I'll show you the rear seats if I can fit. Glove box is a little bit small. I mean, it stretches all the way inside, but it's small. At least there's a light inside. So sitting here in the back is not too bad, surprisingly. Yeah, going in is a little bit difficult, maybe for some. But space here in the back, look, knee room, feet room is excellent. My headroom though, oh gosh, that's not good. That's my headroom. But I can say, comparison only, the only other coupe I've driven is the Hyundai Genesis Coupe. This has way more space than that. I mean, sitting here in the back is way, way more comfortable. We still have M Sport style seats here. It's still the same as front, the El Cantar's style here in the middle. I'll be happy to sit here in the back. As long you are, be honest, 5'5 five, five and below. But if you're taller people, you can just slouch just a bit and your headroom will increase by that much. So at least there's still a lot going up for it. And then materials here and there, there's still that nice texture here in the door. And then speaker setup on either side and then central armrest. You still have the pop-up style head covers. My water jack fits perfectly, that's cool. And then, you cannot sit here in the middle whatsoever because there is a cubby space here. Enough for a phone only, and then there's another cubby space here in the middle. So sitting here in the middle will definitely be impossible unless you add a pillow. I, I have to bend now because I don't have enough headroom. So also the latches here if you want to fold the seats down and increase the storage here. As I said, there are also two coat hangers here on either side and two pop-up ice fix anchor points. So that's about here in the back of the 220 IM Sport, I'll show you the engine. Also, you can fold down the center seat if you want to carry long stuff. So yeah, that's actually a nice feature for a coupe.
So this is the engine of the BMW 220i M Sport. It's a 2-liter single scroll turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that produces 181 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque and is mated to an 8-speed ZF transmission. This engine is exactly the same as the 520i Luxury but this has 3 horsepower less but 10 newton meters more torque and then 0 to 100 time is seven and a half seconds that's 0.4 of a second faster than that so yeah this is as far as i go but hopefully soon i'll be able to drive this beast so hope you guys like and subscribe and i will see you with more future car reviews and more bmws as well i wish i can drive this whole lot bye bye